In this tutorial, we'll continue looking at the curves for just a little bit longer, and maybe we'll do some animation of the curves and just take a little extra look at it. All right, so I've selected the curve, and I'm back into the Object Data button for the curve. And you notice up here in top, by default, it's set at 3D. In old days, it used to be set at 2D by default, but sometimes I only want to work in 2D. And that way, if I've gone into edit mode like this, for instance, and I grab a control point here and I want to extrude it, say E, oops, like that, then I can't accidentally move it up into the Z direction. All right, so that can be really helpful. Just, I mean, that simple little trick. But, or if I want to be in 3D, of course, I could do that, and then I can move the curve in 3D just like that. So it's, it's just really great. So then, or you could leave that, and maybe I'll go put my cursor over to this location here, and maybe I'll go add a plane to the scene instead here, and I'll kind of move it out of the way. I'll scale it down a little bit more like that. And with the plane selected, even the plane works. I could just come over here to the uh, curve again, come down here instead of the Bezier circle. You know, the, the plane does work, actually, I assure you. One of the best ways to do it, you just go into here like this. If you want to use an object like this, just go into edit mode. Easiest way is to, I'll select the face like that, and I'll X out the face only. Okay, so now I have this, and then from here I have to go to Object and come up here to the very top and I'll convert to Curve from a mesh, because that's what it was in the first place. Alright, so now, that being a mesh, I can go here and select the Curve, come down here, and now Plane.002 is on here, and notice it's a squared out object at the ends. Now I see my lighting is really bad, and I will figure that out. When I figure it out, I'll let you know. Okay, well, we're not going to worry about that for now, because that wasn't the purpose of the lesson. <laughs> but you can see, you can actually attach other kind of objects to the curve. They have to be curves, but I've converted that in. But something, it's something about the normals. I'll have to think about that. All right, so uh, the other thing is, when we're in here, the nice thing about having it set like this and with these here, then we can just set these up as animations. Because if I try to, if I go to the curve and I come into here and I select the control point and I set try and press I to set a location keyframe, it doesn't work. All right, so that's why we have the hooks hooked into the curve like that. And then when I press I, I have a location, and then I'll go down and get my timeline down here. And that was, uh, was at 140, so I'll just move it over here to, to 20, and I'll just move it up here like that, and I'll press I here. Whoops and set a location keyframe. And so then then we can animate the curve over time. All right, so that's the real value of having the hooks in the scene. And instead of having to just use the control points of the curve when you're in edit mode. And I'm going to have to figure out this other issue about that shading issue. Let's see if, we, if I know if I go into just regular flat shaded mode, it'll show up. And that's how I've used it before. So something about that, yeah. Well, I'll figure it out and I'll let you know in another lesson. Or if you figure it out, let me know in a posting, would you? All right. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.